All right. It is a massive explosion. So you get a big chunk <laughs> kind of slam. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of samey, but still a hammer. So that'll make a lot of people happy. All right, we are getting to the tail end here. So I actually have to show off these first. This is the blood letter. It's just a mace moveset. Very samey, very simple. Um, has a thrust. It looked like. Yeah, it has a little poke at the very end. And then your R2. This is a stab also, as well. R2. Smack. It's a lot like the mace from from uh, Dark Souls 2. Um, from what I can see, it, it, it is a little different, but you'll get the feel of Dark Souls 2. I know I did. The specialty comes when you transform it, of course. So you hurt yourself, just like the Chikage. Or, yeah, it hurts you. But this is what you get. This is probably one of the coolest weapons in the DLC. And you can, you know, refill your health and just truck with it like this. So, very bashy. This is R1. So, it's a continuous momentum onslaught straight forward. So, that's how you end your combo. It's just straight forward unrelenting onslaught forward. Um, the R2 is actually a, a thrust, which is interesting. It's not something you'd kind of take from this weapon. R2, charge R2. So I believe that might actually do a specific type of damage. Um, it's either blood or frenzy. Um, and I say frenzy, and not as a misstep, but Actually, it actually does frenzy damage. So, if you tap L2, it actually causes frenzy. Now, my frenzy resistance isn't high enough. Oh, it is. It's just high enough to be used. So, you can actually frenzy opponents if they are close enough. I don't know the range of that yet. I haven't really tested it out on anything. But there is, in fact, a blood frenzy weapon in the game, which is Awesome. So, and this is the transformation attack, just so everybody knows. That, the blood actually might do frenzy damage as well. Huh. Again, just now seeing that. So that is basically you turn around your opponent and stab through yourself. Very interesting. And that's just the regular transformation. You just slink off. So you can kill yourself with this. Um, this is another one of the weapons, kind of like Ligarius' wheel, or, uh, I believe it's the Chikage, which you can kill yourself if you need to. I'm assuming that's why there are all these dead bodies. Regardless. Um, let's let you look at that description real quick. So this is actually a pretty important weapon in terms of the, some of the lore in the DLC. Because it mentions Brador. Um, and if I ever do, like, a little chat about the the lore itself then everybody will know this is the one of the coolest weapons in the dlc so lots of hammer-esque weapons this is it it's just smashy it's like a mace it's amazing but this is what you get as an l an r2 very nice Again, lots of forward momentum. Charged, of course. So big smackdown. Takes a lot of stamina. Well, eh, a good third of mine. A lot of, you know, if you don't have runes or anything like that, it's going to take a big chunk. But the coolness comes when it's transformed. So you saw that transformation. This is basically uh, an, the Amygdalan arm. So... It's basically a club whip, a long-range club whip um, that's heavy. Um, I pr actually prefer this myself to the Beast Cutter, um, mainly because it's a little bit faster and it has a little more range on it. In my opinion, I mean, that could be totally false, but that's just my opinion. I'd use this one a little more. But yeah, that's this is R1. Up, and then across, and then down, I'm sorry. So it's four hits. R2, which is interesting. To say the least, because it hits twice. So it's a scrape to the right and then to the left. Charged. 
One straight down. And then a couple more little pegs, so... So I believe that those extra two hits is if you keep holding the button and don't move. Because I can dodge right out of it, so there is a roll cancel for this weapon. Yeah, so those are if you do not move. Those extra two little sla slashes come. So I'll let you get a dig on the description of this. No L2, unfortunately, because it's a... Um, so yeah, it's a small amygdala great one. An arm. Just Somebody just decided to rip it off. Um, smart guy. Or crazy person. But cool weapon, nonetheless. So, we are down to the last two weapons, which is actually something... The last one is actually something... Or, second to last one. It's actually something quite familiar. Alright, you'll notice that that sound was a tad different. So, this is the new move set for the Beast Claws. Um, the rune I have equipped is an Oath rune. So, it's that, it's that blue Oath rune, that Otter one. I'll go... Otter. The Odd one. Uh, I'll go and... So, there's the description for it. It's the Beast Embrace. This is probably going to be one of the hardest runes for you to get, simply because of the, the fight that you need to get through to get it. This was the last thing on my list to get before I showed this off. Pain in my ass, I swear. So this is the new moveset. Very, very, much, much faster. Way quicker, in my opinion. Um, and much more sporadic, I've noticed. And you kind of hunch down when you're using it, which is cool. And that's, of course, the transformation is the rune. And so this is your R2. That's just R2. There is no charge for the R2 when it's transformed. This is your jumping R2. That's something really important to show off. Um, I wasn't really showing jumping attacks because they're not, they're really just kind of run of the mill. You kind of expect them from every other weapon. Without this rune, your jumping R2 was just kind of forward slash. That is like a, you cover so much ground. That was a horrible shot. Let's do it from here. I mean, that you cover a ton of ground um, relative to, like, the rest of the, the moves in the game. You cover tons of ground. Um, this is your L2. Beast Roar with no bullet consumption. Um, I don't know if that's still useful at parrying projectiles, like bullets, um, the fireballs from those uh, flower... Kind of, uh, uh, there, the, there's one you encounter in Bergenworth that shoots fireballs at you. Um, but I don't know if it's good, it's still good at parrying. I will test that for sure. It still looks like it is, and it looks a tad bigger. Like, the area looks a little bit bigger. And I don't actually know if it does anything to equip the Beast Roar with this particular weapon. I don't think it does. No, it doesn't look like it does. Because that, because that is exactly the same thing with no bullet consumption. So, and your rolls change. So you're a little bit more beast-like when you roll. So you notice my back step is more, almost I'm pushing off of the ground. Like a, like a dog. Um, so yeah, stuff changes a lot. And you kind of hunch over after a while, after you attack. If you just hold still, you're hunched over. Very cool, very cool addition. I'm so happy. That they they added some to the beast claw because it was it was cool and I loved it but it was it was definitely lacking. Oh, and this can still be buffed. I want to make that clear. This can absolutely still be buffed. I just want to kind of show that off to make sure everybody knows. Still be buffed just fine. Works exactly the same. Same move set. Nothing changes as far as that goes. So you could still buff this weapon. It's it looks awesome when it's burning too because it's like. You're a beast and it's burning. I actually think this should hurt you, but that's just my opinion. Uh, I'm glad it doesn't hurt you because that would be that'd be bad. So if we take that off, we get we return to the regular move set, which is still quick, you know. But uh, now we have this. <laughs> All 
All right, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, you return to, and I, I will explain, don't worry, I'll explain the Cauliflower Head in a second. Um, my Lumen Wood actually is the lore um, significance of that. But yeah, this is basically, um, I kind of want to show this off first. So we're going to actually change that room back. We'll just uh, change it to Radiance. All right, so the last and weapon I have is this. <laughs> Which is nothing. It's nothing if you don't have the rune equipped. I wanted to show that off. So it is literally just your hand if you don't have the rune equipped. It's a cost parasite. And this one was also a pain in the ass to get. Once you get this, uh, just... Just relish in the fact that, that you're done with that fight. <laughs> um, so the description kind of alludes to, and the name of the weapon kind of alludes to what fight I'm talking about. Everybody who's going to watch this probably already knows what fight I'm talking about, but still. So, the bottom is the part that is important. This atypical weapon can only be clasped, tight and swung, but a cost parasite is said to stimulate phantasms inhabiting a lumen wood. So, this particular rune... Which you get from a, uh, be aware, you get, I'm trying to leave, like, weird locations and stuff out, because it's, it's significant. This particular one, if you don't know how to get it, look up the quest line, because it is a sub-quest line. Um, or, like, a mini-quest. Uh, for a particular new NPC in the game. So, that's what it looks like when it becomes, so when you have the, not that. So, when you don't have the weapon on, it's just, you kind of have tentacle arms, and you look kind of weird. When you do have the cost parasite on, now you have a weapon. Like, it's an actual little tentacle. So you can, everybody can live out their wildest dreams. And again, even when it's, I'll, I'll explain ever, all the moves and stuff. I'll show off as much as I possibly can. But yeah, your uh, role also changes. So you become much more squid-like. Much more squishy. <laughs> much more like a parasite or one of the, uh, the... I don't know, the Lumen Woods, the, the, I don't know, they're gross. Um, then your back step is, again, kind of pushing off the ground, but still kind of jelly-like. You're very gelatinous. Um, so I'm going to take off the shield real quick, just so we can kind of see it. And I'm going to take off the chest piece. Um, so you can actually see my character, it's actually, the Lumen Wood actually has agency across a chunk of your body. Um, so if you have a chest piece on, it doesn't matter what chest piece it is, it covers up part of it. Uh, well, I guess it, some outfits it clips through the back, so it doesn't look that great, but I'm going to put on my charred hunter garb, which has a cape, which makes it look half decent. <laughs> it's still kind of clipping through the back, but that's just the nature of the head. Now, moveset is ultra freaking weird. So it's basically, for all intents and purposes, a whip. Um, you move very slug-like when you use it. And it's a little slow. I don't know what the damage output is. I really haven't used it. Um, this is R2. This is charged R2. Which seems decent enough. I'm going to have to test this weapon like extensively to see if I will even use it. Um, and then you transform. So this is into the transform. It's just a smack. I believe that's all you get. It's just a forward smack. Yeah, that's it. And then you have your transformed moveset. Which is basically a left and right smack with a downward of both hands. So I'll show that off again because it's ultra weird, like I said. This is the jumping attack. Yes, you saw that correctly. It's basically a tongue or your brain. I'm not sure what it is. This is the R1, which I think you already saw. Oh, that was a horrible angle. I'm sorry. So it's... And there's no follow-up to that. Oh, yes, there is. That was the follow-up. So there's a follow-up to that. It just takes a ton of stamina um, to do that. Let me let it recharge all the way. So is there a follow-up to that? There totally is. Let's see if there's another one. No. So there's just two, which is fine. Um... What was it? I, oh, it's the backstep stuff. So yeah, that's a very odd attack. It looks... It's a projectile of some sort. It kind of looks like... I don't know, an acid spit?